So these past few months, I've been steadily working my way down the chain of Oppo smartphones, starting with those Find X5 Billy Big Bollocks flagship smartphones packed to the tits with awesome hardware. I then followed this up with a bit of Oppo Reno 8 Pro action, which again had some of that really smart camera tech packed in there from the Find X5 series, scaled down some of the other hardware bits for a more affordable asking price. And if you find you can't quite stretch up to that Oppo Reno 8 Pro, well, no worries. There's the regular Oppo Reno 8 5G, which will cost almost 200 quid less than that Pro model, but still packs in some pretty decent specs. If you've got a powerful MediaTek Dimensity chipset for gaming shenanigans, 80 watt fast charging battery tech, and once again, you've got that capable 50 meg Sony camera sensor. But enough yammering, let's whip the Oppo Reno 8 5G out of that box, test out the game and the camera, etc. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So what do you get in the box besides the Oppo Reno 8? Well, you got one of them beefy 80 watt power adapters, Type-C USB charging cable, plenty of safety guide action, they really want to keep you safe, and a USB A to C adapter as well for transferring files across. And that is it, sadly, no condom case, which is certainly a bit of a bummer, but at least you get the adapter and everything still. Right, so let's turn our attention to the Oppo Reno 8 5G. And the design looks certainly very similar to that Pro model. You've got that solid unibody design again. The camera bump is just that, a bump, so it's just a gentle slope up from the rest of the back end rather than a separate piece. And this right here is the Shimmer Black model, which isn't particularly trouser rousing, but you can also grab the Oppo Reno 8 5G in Shimmer Gold, if you want something a bit more fancy. The matte finish here does mean that it doesn't pick up greasy prints quite as easily as a glossy smartphone, but it does feel rather plasticky, I've got to say. It is a real shame when some rivals around this price point do come with a lovely glass back, which feels a lot more premium. It's probably quite a mental thing as well, because this smartphone is quite light at just 179 grams. Hopefully the plastic back and the plastic frame won't scratch up too much over time. And then up front, you've got Gorilla Glass 5 protecting that display as well as an actual pre-installed screen protector. Those bezels aren't the skinniest, especially down below. You've got a bit of a lip on this thing, but nothing too terrible. You don't get any water resistance here on the Oppo Reno 8, sadly, unlike some rivals such as the Nothing Phone, uh, the Nokia X30. So maybe not a good one to take into a bubbly bath with you, anything like that. Now let's have a gander at the software and what you've got running on this thing is Android 12, not quite the latest freshest Android 13. And it's actually a slightly older version of Color OS as well, Color OS 12.1. However, this should be updated to Android 13 and Color OS 13 imminently. And if you want to know more about the Color OS 13 launcher, well, I've done a big old snazzy video all about the best features chucked in there. So go check that out. Color OS is a pretty dandy little launcher. I rather like it. It doesn't absolutely smother Android to get all the usual features like the Google Discover feed. You've got a good bit of app straight action, albeit one that's absolutely stuffed full of crapware. Unfortunately, Oppo is pretty bad at loading all kinds of shit onto its smartphones. Stuff like Facebook, LinkedIn, booking.bloody.com. It's all here and it can all frankly get to f and if you're a fan of rubbish mobile games, boy, are you sorted. Bubble Boxes Match 3D, Goods Match 3D, whoa, Tile Master 3D, so much 3D you'll want to blow your own brains out. But anyhow, back onto the good stuff, let's stay positive, and ColorOS adds all kinds of great little features like this pull-down gesture so you can quickly and easily select any icon on your desktop. You've got some pretty nifty gaming features, which I'll bang on about later. If you're a die-hard multitasker, you've got the float and window shenanigans. Get a bit of that on the go. And ColorOS is very helpful when it comes to customizing the look and feel of the UI as well. You can change up the general colors, the icons. Get some rather sexy edge light and notification action on the go as well. And because the Oppo Reno 8 5G serves up an OLED display, you do have an always on display option. This includes all the usual fan favorites like portrait silhouettes. You can create an always on display based on your own Gurnan mug. Loads of different options chucked away in here. It's well worth having a bit of a play about with. You can even switch up the fingerprint animation, which plays off when you're using the in-display fingerprint sensor. And speaking of which, it seems like a pretty good one here on the Oppo Reno 8 5G. No issues whatsoever, other than the fact that it is positioned quite far down that screen, so it's a bit of a stretch. But in terms of the actual responsiveness, the accuracy seems pretty much spot on. And certainly no complaints for me when it comes to the Wi-Fi download speeds either. The likes of Genshin Impact absolutely flew down despite the fact it's like 2,000 gigabytes now. As well as the Wi-Fi 6 support, you've also got 5G connectivity here. And I haven't had a chance to personally test that out, but Oppo's usually pretty bloody good when it comes to those connections. 
For your storage needs, well, you've got 256 gigs stuffed inside of the Oppo Reno 8 5G. Very generous indeed. And as you can see, not too much of that used up by the actual system. And that's just as well, really, because like most of its kin, there is no space in that double-sided SIM tray for a micro SD memory card, just the two SIM cards. Now, so far, that Oppo Reno 8 5G has been pretty bloody similar to the Pro model. But one of the differences is the display, which has shrunk down from 6.7 inches to just 6.4. It is still AMOLED tech though, so you still get nice sharp contrast, wide viewing angles, and on top brightness levels, you'll have no trouble seeing it outdoors, even when the sun peaks from behind the clouds. Got rich poppy colors, so animated fair like Cyberpunk looks absolutely lush, and it's a full HD plus resolution as well. So even though it's a reasonably sized screen, the picture does remain pin sharp. So like most mid-range mobiles these days, you'll enjoy some particularly eye-pleasing visuals when you are kicking back with some Disney+, Plus, some Netflix, whatever else. It's only a tiny wee selfie cam orifice and it's stuck away in a corner as well, so you'll barely even notice it when you do go full screen. You can tinker around with the colours to a small degree. You've got the usual Ultra Vision engine shenanigans, which I don't think actually really does that much. When it comes to the refresh rate, one of the other differences between the regular model and the Pro model is the fact that it tops at 90 hertz here, whereas the Pro went all the way up to 120. But personally, my knack at all lies can't tell the difference between 90 and 120 anyway. Everything still looks silky smooth here on the regular Oppo Reno 8. As for the audio, well, it is sadly just a mono speaker setup here on the regular Oppo Reno 8. So that bottom mounted blaster just there. But if you don't have any headphones handy, is it still decent sound? Let's find out. Fact 9, the Dimensity 9200 tastes a bit like a McDonald's Egg McMuffin. Well, on that top volume, there's no danger of it rupturing your eardrums or anything, that's for sure. Quite tinny output still as well, and easily muffled, of course, when you are gaming or something. So overall, not massively impressive. Naturally, there's no headphone jack on this thing either. What were you expecting? So if you do want some decent quality sound, you'll either have to get dongled up. Otherwise, there is Bluetooth 5.3 streaming support, which works absolutely beautifully to headphones, speakers, whatever. And you've got full support for Aptex HD, LDAC, LHDC, all of that tasty stuff. So at least that kind of makes up for it. Now, while the Pro model of the Oppo Reno 8 was powered by MediaTek's Dimensity 8100 Max, what you've got here in the regular Reno 8 is the MediaTek Dimensity 1300. A more affordable option for sure, but still packs decent performance as well. It was previously used in the OnePlus Nord 2T, allegedly to be used in the upcoming 3T as well. And that chipset is backed here on the Reno 8 by 8 gigs of DDR4 RAM this time, not DDR5 unlike the Pro. But even though you've got a downgrade here, absolutely no worries. The performance is still silky smooth and you've got a built-in cooling system as well, which helps out when you are doing a good bit of gaming, especially if you're playing the likes of Genshin Impact for hours at a time because frankly, it's so bloody urgh, addictive. I just really can't get enough of frazzling these annoying little limpy things with great big bolts of lightning. Now, of course, don't expect to be able to play the likes of Genshin Impact with those graphics scaled all the way up, but on the lower detail settings, it ran absolutely fine. The occasional tiny little judder here and there as you're dodging about the place, smacking things with a great f**k off club. But overall, the frame rate stayed nice and stable, and yeah, it was a really enjoyable experience. And yes, if you were paying attention earlier, I did mention a built-in gaming system courtesy of that Color OS launcher. This had some pretty nifty features, including the usual screen capture and recording, your full-on game focus modes and performance tools as well, so you can jack that all the way up when you are playing the likes of Genshin just to dedicate all of the resources, all the memory and everything to the game. You've got touch sensitivity controls as well, so you can boost them or lower them to suit your own personal game and preferences. Now the battery tech packed into the Oppo Reno 8 is basically identical to what you get with that Pro model. It's again a 4,500 mAh capacity cell. And while I could just about scrape sort of five-ish hours out of the Pro model, should get a little bit more out of the regular Reno 8 because it is a more energy efficient platform. And of course, it's not having to power an absolutely flipping massive 120 Hertz display, so that should help. And then when it is wiped out, you've got that 80 watt SuperVOOC wide charging support as well. So I'll bung a cable in its bottom and it should be powered up in no time at all. No wireless charging support here though, unfortunately, unlike some rivals like the Nothing Phone again. So let's finish up this unboxing and hands-on review with a squint at the Oppo Reno 8 camera tech. And what you've got here is once again that 50 megapixel Sony IMX 766 camera sensor, which has been super popular in 2022. 
It's the same camera hardware that Oppo's used on the Oppo Reno 8 Pro and even the Oppo Find X5, Find X5 Pro, those flagship smartphones. But once again here on the Oppo Reno 8, like the Reno 8 Pro, there is no optical image stabilization. And sadly, while the Oppo Reno 8 Pro and those Find X5 flagship phones sported Oppo's own Marisilicon NPU, that has also been scrapped here for the regular Oppo Reno 8. But apart from that, it's a very similar setup. You've got a reasonably swift shutter speed as well, so good news if you're snapping kids or pets. The focus is pretty bloody good as long as the lighting isn't too dim. And these are just a few test samples that I shot around about the homestead the past 24 hours. As you can see, nice crisp detail in there, some nice punchy colours. Even strong contrast doesn't bork up your snaps too much. But once the lighting conditions do get rather dim, you'll start to see lots of grain creeping into your pics. So certainly if you're a bit of a night owl, you take lots of photos in the wee hours, you might want to try and upgrade to a different blower or otherwise try something like the Pixel 6a. And by default, you do have a bit of pixel bit in action, but you can shoot at the maximum 50 megapixel resolution just by tapping like so. Again, best done when the lighting conditions are really good. And as well as that 50 meg primary sensor, you've also got an ultra wide angle shooter. You've also got a macro snapper on here as well, which you can swap to here in the bonus camera modes. I'm not really a fan of the old macro photography. I'd rather just take a high resolution shot and then crop in, to be honest, because otherwise you end up just basically blocking out all the light. And then if you want to shoot a bit of video, you can just swap to the cinematic mode like so. And as you can see, you can shoot up to 4K resolution footage. And again, here's just some quick Ultra HD test clips. The visuals certainly nice and crisp. Those colors again, quite poppy. The stabilization is not fantastic, but I've seen worse and the audio pickup was absolutely fine. But again, if you want to shoot a bit of video in the evening time, well, the Oppo Reno 8 isn't quite as impressive as the likes of the Oppo Reno 8 Pro, sadly, as you don't get those Marisilicon smarts. And then last up, flip to the front, and you've got the same 32 megapixel Sony IMX709 camera sensor as found in the Oppo Reno 8 Pro. And this certainly captures plenty of detail, even in fairly soft light. So uh, if you've got plenty of sags and bags on the go, you have been warned. And what's that? You want to shoot a bit of video with that front-facing selfie snapper? Well, you can capture footage at up to full HD resolution. There's no 4K support for that front-facing snapper, unfortunately. But again, the audio pickup, absolutely fine. It does the job for a bit of Skype and Zoom and something like that. And that, in a nutshell, my lovelies, is the Oppo Reno 8 5G. And as you can see, a few compromises compared with the Pro model to justify the fact that they've slashed 200 quid off that asking price. So, you know, the performance isn't quite as beefy. You don't have that Marisilicon NPU for really shit hot night photography and videography. But you know what? The performance is still slick enough. You can still do a good bit of gaming on this thing. You've got the 80 watt fast charging. You've got that pretty slick Color OS launcher as well. So, overall, you know, not a bad mid range smartphone. But is it as good as a Pixel 6a or a nothing phone? Well, you guys let me know. What do you reckon? Are you tempted by the Oppo Reno 8 or have you even been using it? As your full time form, be great to hear from you down in the comments below. Please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a ruddy, wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.